Hello and welcome. In this biology blackboard lesson, we are going to be looking at how energy flows through an ecosystem. So the first thing that we should know is that in almost every ecosystem on this planet, the energy starts from sunlight. So sunlight is where we get the starting amount of energy from. Now this energy from sunlight travels to Earth and it gets caught up into the first level of organisms and those organisms are called producers. So we're going to put in some producers down here at the bottom of our little ecosystem. Some nice grass and We'll put in a we'll put in a nice little tree as well. I'll put in a little tree here. Okay. Now, like I said, these organisms are called producers. They're called producers because they have the ability to produce their own energy. So they can, and another way to say that is that they can make their own food. Food is sort of a substitute for the term energy. So these organisms take the energy that is found in sunlight and they are able to convert that into energy that they can use to fuel their, their bodies and they do that through the process of photosynthesis. Now, what we've shown here are some plants, and plants are a large group of producers, but they're not the only producers that are out there. So some other examples of producers, aside from plants, would be algae. Algae are the main producers that are found in oceans, and also bacteria are a big group of producers as well. So the energy that you find in this level of organisms doesn't stay there for too long. Eventually it is going to move up through the ecosystem to a group of organisms that will eat these producers. Now just to make note here, these arrows that I'm drawing represent energy flow. So energy is flowing from the sun into these producers. It will now be flowing from these producers to our next group of organisms. And the organism that I will draw that is going to be eating our grass will be a rabbit. Let's see how we do here on drawing a rabbit. We have one big ear, and then this ear can be folded over. All right. This is our rabbit, and we'll give our rabbit a little carrot, just as a reminder that it's a rabbit. And carrots are plants, so that makes perfect sense that our rabbit would be eating a producer. Now this level of organisms is called the herbivore. The herbivore. And herbivores only eat plants, or to be more specific, they eat producers. So there would be examples of ocean herbivores that do not eat plants, but they eat algae. Now the other thing that I should mention here is that herbivore, herbivores fall into a larger category of organisms called consumers. And consumers are any organisms that cannot produce their own food, but they have to eat other organisms in order to obtain their food. And we'll talk about a few other types of consumers here in just a few moments. 
So our energy that started off in the sun traveled down into the producers, and now when the rabbit eats the producers, the energy goes to our lovely little rabbit here. I will label him as a rabbit, just in case we forget later on. Another uh, little key point to this idea of energy flow is that the amount of energy, so let's put this over here, the amount of energy that goes from one level to the next is only about 10%. So the amount of energy that has gone from the producer level up to the herbivore, so from our grass to our rabbits, is only about 10% of the total. So let's say, we'll keep a running tally of our energy over here. Let's say that in our producer level, we had 10,000 calories of energy. If only 10% of that moved up to our rabbit, that means that in our herbivore level, we only have 1,000 calories left. We'll keep track of that. We'll come back to that later. Okay, so our energy is not going to stay in our rabbit for too long. Eventually our energy will move up this ecosystem to one of two different places. It could move to a type of organism that only eats rabbits. And let's say that that organism is a fox. All right. Now, I'm not so sure that I've got a good fox drawing in me. So we'll just give him a, a big bushy tail out here. And then, oh, just, yeah, there we go. That's our that's our fox. We'll give him some striped coloring in there. That's our fox. Now, this organism, the fox, only eats herbivores. It only eats other animals. And those type of consumers are called carnivores. So, a carnivore, which is our fox in this example, only eats meat. Only eats meat. The other type of organism where this energy could flow to would be, uh, let's say, like a bear. And we'll draw a bear standing on its hind legs here, being very fearsome. Rawr. All right, there's our, there's our mean old bear. Now bears are unique in that they would not only uh, possibly eat a rabbit, but they could also, if they needed to, eat producers. Bears hibernate in the winter, so they need to be able to eat lots of different types of organisms. And that makes a bear an omnivore. And omnivores eat everything. All right. So our omnivore is our bear. Now let's go back to our amount of energy flow over here. If we had a thousand calories left at our herbivore level, as soon as our rabbit was eaten by either a fox or a bear, again only 10% of the energy would move up to the next level. So that would leave us with 100 calories at this level. Okay, now carnivores, omnivores, and herbivores are all consumers. There's one final type of consumer that is unique because it only eats dead organisms. And the classic example of the uh, dead organism eater is the vulture. So I'm going to draw my little vulture here. We're going to tell it's a vulture because he's going to have a big beak. He's going to have a big beak and he's going to have 
feathers. There we go. And stick legs. That's our vulture. So although a bear or a fox might be at the top of their respective food chain, and not many things would eat these organisms when they're alive, they could be eaten when they die. And they still have energy when they die. So their energy can flow to uh, this level of consumers, which are called scavengers. And scavengers eat dead organisms. Dead organisms. And a scavenger is also a type of consumer. Okay, so again, if we're keeping track of our energy over here, uh, 10,000 calories in the producer level went to 1,000 calories at our herbivore level, up to 100, and now only 10 calories from that original 10,000 are left. Good thing we only have one more level to go. Now this, our vulture up here, is really at the top of the food chain. Okay. Uh, most the energy has made its trek almost all the way through this ecosystem. There's only one more thing that might take some energy from these top level organisms, and those are decomposers. They are our final stop on this energy flow system. And decomposers break down dead and decaying organisms. They can also break down waste as well. Right. So good examples of uh, decomposers would be bacteria, which are not very easy to draw. So I'll just make a bunch of dots. And another very common type of decomposer is the worm. So we'll make ourselves a little worm here. So, energy can finally flow to these organisms once the vulture dies. Or if the fox dies, it could be decomposed by these worms as well. So if we go from our vulture up to our worm, and we're looking at the amount of energy that is left over, we take 10% of these 10 calories that are left, and we are left with one singular calorie. So very little energy actually passes from one level to the next. And what, where 90% of that energy goes is it escapes from these organisms as heat. All right. As these organisms hunt for their food, as they live their daily lives, they use a lot of energy. So the 90% of the energy that they take in uh, actually gets used up and then is released from their body in the form of heat. So there you have where the energy starts, which is the sun, and its path through an ecosystem from producers to consumers to decomposers. Thanks for watching, and this is Mr. Mullins signing off.